بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Allah created us mind, body and spirit. The biggest problem in the western culture or in the atheistic culture or in the godless culture is that they believe that we're just like you know advanced animals. We're just smart apes that can talk. We're apes that have achieved communication and speech. But the reality of it is is when you truly see humanity and study humanity, we know that human beings are much more than just smart apes. They have much more than that. And the reality of what human beings have which makes them beyond what just the primates and the animals are is that we have a ruh, we have a soul that has been created by the Creator to reflect all of the beautiful, beautiful qualities. Right? In the Christian tradition, it's called that God created human beings in His image. In Allah khalaqa Adam fi suratihi. But when we say God created, we Muslims believe God created human beings in His image doesn't mean in a physical anthropomorphic image. But it means that God created insan, human beings, in this image to be able to reflect those divine and beautiful attributes. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compassionate, human beings have the ability to be compassionate. Just like Allah is Rahman and Rahim, human beings have the ability to reflect Rahma. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal is Kareem, human beings, God is generous. Human beings have the ability to reflect that generosity. Just as human beings uh, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Wahhab, He is the giving. Human beings have that capacity to reflect that giving. Just like you know, Allah Azza wa Jal, right, He is all those beautiful qualities. Human beings have the ability to do what? To reflect that. That's why it says in one hadith, Allahu Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Allahu Jamil, Allah is, is the possessor of the most beautiful attributes and Allah loves beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rafiqun Yuhibbul Rifq. Allahu Rafiqun Yuhibbul Rifq. Allah is the most kind and Allah loves that you should show kindness. So it's saying that Allah has this and human beings are the reflection of this. We should be the reflection of this. What is the aspect that reflects that? Not our bodies. Not our minds. Our souls. The body and the mind doesn't reflect that. It's the soul which is a subtle strength and potential within us that is able to reflect that. So we all have this, and the, the month of Ramadan is that month in which that spirit and the mind and the body, it gets balanced out together. Imam al-Ghazali, he mentions, Shah Waliullah and Imam Ghazali, they mention this beautiful concept that every single human being, we have three tendencies inside of us. Every single human being has three tendencies. It is called Quwwatul Bahimiyya and Quwwatul Malakiyya and Quwwatul Shaytaniyya. These are tendencies. They're innate in every human being. We have animalistic, beastly tendencies. We have angelic tendencies and we have devilish tendencies inside of us. And why we are born with these innate qualities is because we need it in this world to survive. So we have a spirit. This body is the vehicle of our spirit. As long as you're in this world, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 70 years, however long it's written for you, God gave you this body which was, which was created in the womb of the mother. And at four months, God then sent the soul inside of this vehicle. And you're going to be in this body, in this conveyance, in this vehicle, as long as your term and your appointed time is written in this world. So you have to take care of this body. You understand? This is your vehicle. But this body is not you. It's part of you, but it's not only you. What is you is the spirit inside. 
That is, will be eternal. That never dies. There will come a point where it kind of goes into a comatosis, right? Yawm al qiyamah. Everything goes into a. But once it's, the body dies, the soul goes up. It's the soul that will be rewarded or punished. It's the soul that gains piety or, right, evil. So what happens is, we will, we will understand this, what, what's the objective of Ramadan. We have been given these bodies, these bodies, just like any car, any vehicle, they need fuel. It has an engine. It needs oil. It needs fuel. It needs tune-up. It needs, you know, transmission. All the, sometimes the parts get messed up. So this body is our vehicle. We need to take care of it. So therefore, there is an appetite. This body has appetite. It also, it needs food. Right? Like when the car, it needs oil or it needs gas, then you could see the red, it starts turning red. The car starts, it won't, it won't function properly. Similarly, the body, right, it requires this nourishment. It requires this food. It requires a tune-up from time to time. So we've been commanded by God that we have to take care of this vehicle. This is amana from Allah. This is a gift from Allah. This is the vehicle. We have to take care of it. Your body has a right on you. You have to take care of it. You have to exercise and eat well and all of these things. And not, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Don't throw yourself into destruction. You have to take care of this body. And that's, and that's why killing this body is not allowed. Because it's a vehicle that you... Imagine if you rent a vehicle from the rent a car and then you go and you crash it into the wall and destroy the car, you're going to be in big trouble. This is a vehicle that God has given you for this appointed time while you're in this world that you have to take care of it. It has needs, it has necessities. You have to take care of it. But sometimes what happens is it takes over. Imagine if you're driving on the freeway and the car takes over. Tesla, auto, autopilot, it goes haywire. It goes haywire. That's scary, right guys? I heard about that, man. I've, I've been there. I've done it. I drove and I let it go. I said, this is scary. I don't feel comfortable with this. There was one guy is like on his Tesla and he's like, you know, text messaging while the car is going. I'm like, please, I'm not used to this. You got to give me time to get used to all this technology. Tesla's like going on its own and he's on, on a text message. Imagine if that just has a mind of its own and it just goes. It's like going through the lanes hitting cars, going through buildings, going through houses. Imagine if it goes haywire. Sometimes the body does that. It loses control. Imam al-Ghazali said that when the donkey is being carried by the rider, the donkey should be carrying you, right? You shouldn't be carrying the donkey. And that's the objective. Sometimes the body starts controlling us. When the body tells us, look this way, or do this thing, or do this inappropriate thing, eat this, do that, drink that. The, the body says jump and you say how high. It starts controlling you. So the, one of the objectives, objectives of the month of Ramadan is when you are fasting, you're bringing down the influence of that beastly tendencies that's inside of you, that controls you. The beast inside is our vehicle. We need to feed it. But sometimes it takes over, right? Right? You, some people, they have, that's why they have eating disorders. You guys have heard that? A person can't control himself. It's just like, kah, 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 kah. you know, whatever comes in front of him, he just, those eating, the, 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 the beast is controlling you. He can't stop. He doesn't know when to stop. So the month of Ramadan, one of the objectives is, is that this beastly tendency gets pushed down. It's inside every one of us. Some people ask, well, why did God put it inside of me if He doesn't want me to use it? No, He wants you to use it. But He wants you to use it correctly, with balance, not where you go out of the limit. Because when you go out of the limitations and the body is starting to control you, that's where you get disorders. That's where you get addiction. Do you know what is addiction? Is when the beastly, your, your vehicle is controlling you. You can't control your vehicle anymore. That's what addiction is. Your beast that wants enjoyment, that wants food, that wants intoxication, it makes it wants to feel good. Sex addiction or drug addiction or porn addiction, that is the beast becoming out of control. 
So this month of Ramadan and this fasting was given a time so that you be able to control it. Put it in a couple of chains, you know? Put it in a cage and say, you know what? You got another six hours to go. Oh man, another six hours. And you, 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 you train it. Just like the horses, you know, they, they train the horses right, to stay away from water one day, two days, and then they extend it more, and then they take it out in the caravans. That's what they used to do to the camels. They give it a drink, and then they delay it a little bit more, and that's how they would prepare the camels to go on a longer journey. So you're training the nafs. So the month of Ramadan does that. It, 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 it controls these animalistic tendencies. The second tendency that's in us is the angelic qualities. So in the day we're fasting, and in the night time, we are standing in prayer and reciting of Qur'an. What does that do? That enhances now the angelic qualities. So the beastly qualities are being pushed down, and the angelic qualities of prayer, glorifying God, reciting of scriptures, doing righteous actions, charity, giving to the poor, helping Serving the community, which is in the month of Ramadan, you know, we have giving to the poor, helping the community, feeding the people. We do this, and what does this do? This now enhances those tendencies inside of us to do good, to be righteous, to be pious. Now what happens? The angelic qualities are increasing. Also, angels don't eat and drink. Angels don't have family or intimate relations. So in the day, you are resembling the malaika. The angels. And in the night, you're resembling the angels. You're standing in the rows, performing Salatul Taraweeh and Qiyamul Layl and night vigil and night prayers. So in the day, angelic. In the night, angelic. And what's happening to the beast? The beast is calming down. You are taming the beast. So that you're, but you're still feeding him. Ramadan doesn't say don't eat. We eat at iftari. But we are putting something in an organized fashion. Discipline. We're not saying don't eat. Look at the subhanallah. Ummat and wasata. Deen and wasat. Our deen is wasat. It's not saying don't eat. It's not saying don't drink. It's saying do it at an appropriate time. Do it with balance. Do it with discipline. And even those who are serious about Ramadan, what do they do? When, when they eat at iftari, they said, no, I have to stand in taraweeh. I can't eat too much. So even that now is giving them more balance to set. So now imagine how much discipline you're getting in your life by doing that and enhancing these good qualities. Thirdly is the quwa or the satanic or the devilish tendencies that's inside of us. What are the devilish tendencies inside of us? To fight, to argue, to squabble, to yell, to scream, to curse. To become angry. Isn't that? This is the shaitanic. This is the devil. He's fighting with God. The devil fought with God. Oh, you created Adam. I'm worthy of prostration. Why did you create him? So this squabbling and this arguing is also something which the Prophet ﷺ mentions in a beautiful hadith where it mentions about one of the objectives of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ says that فَإِذَا كَانَ صَوْمُ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ If it is the day of your fast, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَسْخَبْ Don't use indecent words and don't argue. فَلَا يَرْفُثْ Don't say indecent and obscene words. Don't use bad language in Ramadan. This is teaching us that another objective of Ramadan is to guard ourselves from the devilish tendencies. Cussing, Rudeness, fighting, arguing, squabbling, cursing, right? And it comes, it comes over us. So look what the Prophet ﷺ said about fasting. وَالصِّيَامُ Junna. Fasting is a shield. Shield from sin. Because when you're in a state of fasting, just like you're guarding yourself from that water, from that food, the hunger in your stomach and the thirst in your mouth reminds you, hey, wait a minute. I shouldn't be fighting. I shouldn't be talking bad about somebody. I shouldn't be backbiting somebody. So the fasting itself is a shield. Because when you're hungry and when you're thirsty, that reminds you 
that you're in a state, in a state that necessitates you, that requires you to stay away from sin. فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَصْخَبْ So therefore, don't use dirty language and don't argue. فَإِنْ سَابَّهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ If somebody curses you and if somebody fights you, then what should you do? فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ Then tell him, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Subhanallah, what's the thing? You know, usually you're not supposed to tell people that you're fasting. You're supposed to keep this as a secret. You're not supposed to uh, announce to everybody, I'm fasting. In the month of Ramadan, everybody knows. But why is it saying here, you should tell him, I'm fasting, I'm fasting? Because it will make you realize, wait a minute, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be fighting. And you make him realize who's trying to fight with you, that wait a minute, this person is in worship. Fasting is a state of worship. When you intend to not eat and drink or stay away from marital relations with the intention to please Allah, this is a state of ibadah. And when a person is fighting with a fasting person, what is he doing? You're, 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 you're bothering somebody and disturbing somebody who is worshipping God. So here the Prophet is teaching us that fasting is not just about hunger and thirst, but it's about withholding yourself from the devilish qualities, from fighting, from indecency, from arguing, from squabbling, right? And if anybody wants to fight with you, tell them, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, right? To remind them that you should not bother somebody who is in a state of worship. And to remind yourself, you shouldn't ruin your state of worship. So, this is a beautiful philosophy. The philosophy of fasting. The objective of fasting. Is that the mind, the body, and the spirit, it gets equilibrium in this blessed month. The whole year we're feeding the body. Feed, feed, feed. And we're depriving the soul. And this month is given dedicated to rectify and bring balance and harmony between mind, body, and soul. But what about the mind? How does fasting help the mind? So it, Fasting helps the mind in this way, is that it's basically 1 p.m. or it's 2.20, 2.23. I'm very thirsty. And I'm, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just parched right now. And I want to drink this water. But then what happens is I say, the mind tells the body, hey man, you know what? We got another six hours to go. We have another six hours to go. So the mind, it's the ruh is the king. The soul is the king. The king sends the message to the brain. The brain tells the body, so the soul is guided by revelation. The soul is guided, guided by the, the, the commandment of God. The soul is king. The soul should be king. In some people, the soul is not king. The dog is the king, the beast. You see what happens? When the beast becomes the king and the soul gets put in prison, the king gets incarcerated. He's under house arrest. Then what happens? It's all messed up. So the soul gets its order from the master of the universe, the master of the creator of the whole universe, of all creation. And the commandment is, we must fast. The soul gives the order to the mind. The mind says, wait a minute, I'm, body is saying, give me water. Body is saying, give me water, give me food, I'm hungry, it's lunchtime. It's lunchtime right now, give me food, give me water. Mind says, the king's orders. Soul, ruh. The king's orders, we got another four hours left. We know they got another five hours left. And then what happens? Then the mind, it has to create a, uh, a mechanism. The mind has to create a mechanism. What is that mechanism? It's called patience. Now, the mind is learning patience. It's creating and developing this patience. That is why the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, he says, وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الصَّبْرِ وَالصَّبْرُ ثَوَابُهُ الْجَنَّةِ 
And this is the month of patience, and patience, its reward is nothing but paradise. Brothers and sisters, do you know, is there anything in this world that you can do without patience? Anything? You're sitting here right now, tolerating my boring speech. This requires patience. Right now, you're, you're implementing patience. The more patience you have, the more you'll be able to sit here. The lesser patience, the, you, you, know, you want to leave quickly. Everything in this world requires patience. You want to have a good married life? Let me give you a good advice. You should be patient. If you want to have a good married marriage life, one word that will make your marriage wonderful marriage, patience. You want to be a good student? Patience. You want to get a degree? You want to become a doctor, an engineer? You want to get to your destination? You have to have patience. You know who are the people who lose out in life from everything are those who are impatient. If you're impatient, you can't keep a marriage. If you're impatient, you can't get a degree. If you're impatient, you can't tolerate your kids. You can't be a good father. You can't be a good mother. You can't be a good child. You can't be a good daughter. You can't be a good employee. And you can't be a good boss. Am I true? Or is this true or not? Everything in life requires patience. But nobody tells us, where do we get patience? Can I buy it from the store? Can I order it on Amazon? Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed the month of Ramadan. This is where we achieve. This is, the, this is the store. This is where you get it. You get it from fasting. Is it that simple? That simple. You know why? Because for 30 days, your mind is telling your body, shut up. We got another five hours, brother. Quiet. Don't complain. And what is it? The, the, the scholars teach us, you're not supposed to complain. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh man, that burger looks so good. And just watching YouTube videos all day, you know, about the best steaks and Joshua Wiseman videos, you know, watching all those, like, you know, just constantly unending. You know, and then what happened? You know, you're not supposed to do that. So what does that do now? The whole day, one day, two days, one week, two weeks, by the end of Ramadan, you have developed something. This is called patience. You can't buy it on Amazon. You can get it from Ramadan. Not Amazon. Ramadan. You have Amazon, then you have Ramadan. Right? This is where you get it. All of these beautiful qualities. And another thing the month of Ramadan teaches us, other than the, 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 the coherence and the equilibrium between the mind, body, and spirit, you also learn these beautiful qualities. Because in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الْمُوَاسَى It's the month of compassion. Month of compassion. How do we learn compassion from being hungry? No, you don't learn compassion from being hungry, but you think about those people who are always hungry. How will you ever know what a poor person feels like when your fridge is full to the max and whenever you get hungry, you can't, you know, just at, as soon as you feel that, five minutes, ten minutes, we got some chips going down there, you know, we got some cookies, we got some chips, we got some junk food. Immediately, as soon as you get a little bit of hunger. In the month of Ramadan, hours go by. And those hours, sometimes, you know, all you do is think. You're like, man, there's people that feel this every single day, even outside of Ramadan. Man, this is like muasa. You know what muasa means? The most beautiful definition of muasa is in, is in Farsi and Urdu. Hamdardi. Yak hamdardi pay damesha to dil insan. Hamdardi pay damesha. Hamdardi means you get a, a feel of that person's pain. That's the, that's the Farsi translation of muasa. Hamdardi. Feeling the pain of another person. Allah wanted us. Imagine if you're the, you know, subhanAllah, I see some of our non Muslim brothers and sisters. I, I respect, man, I, I, I admire them. They said, oh, I want to know what Muslims feel like when they fast in Ramadan. Muslims will never do that. I want to make myself hungry. Muslims are like, bring the Qabuli. I know how it feels like. 
you know, but like there's brothers and sisters that say, okay, I want to know what Muslims feel like. And they actually fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to feel what other people feel. Not only in Ramadan, but outside of the month of Ramadan. And in another thing, the Prophet ﷺ mentions, Man fattara fihi sa'iman, anyone who feeds a fasting person, he's encouraging to feed people. So this month is not only about being hungry and thirsty, it's about compassion, it's about patience, it's about these qualities that you can't buy on Amazon. You have to go through it, you have to feel it, you have to experience it. He says, Man fattara fihi sa'iman. It will be a forgiveness of his sins and God will emancipate him from the hellfire. And he will get the same reward of that fasting person without anyone being diminished of the reward of their fast. So one of the companions, one of the disciples, they said, O Messenger of Allah, every one of us doesn't have the ability to feed a fasting person. Then what do we do? He says, Allah will give you that reward even if you give a person one date. Even if you give a person one sip of water. Even if you just go like this and give a person at the time of iftari a, a, a bottle of water or a sip of milk, you will get the reward of that fasting person. What is the Prophet trying to teach us? To think about others besides yourself. When you do that, what are you doing? Here, brother, take this bottle of water. You're not giving him a full iftari, but you're thinking about somebody else. This is muasa. You're giving a person a date. You're not feeding him a meal, but you're thinking about somebody other than yourself. This is another thing that Ramadan teaches. This is what we learn from Ramadan. This is what the Prophet said. This is the prophetic Ramadan. These are the philosophies. These are the objectives. Imagine this is so deep. This is beyond hunger and thirst. And the Prophet ﷺ, he complained. He complained. He made shikaya. Of those people who get nothing from their fasting but hunger and thirst. What did he say? Come min sa'imin, laysa min siyamihi illa al-ju'a. Wa kam min qa'imin, laysa min qiyamihi illa al-sahar. How many are fasting? How unfortunate. Afsos. How unfortunate is those people, they get nothing from their fasting but hunger and thirst. And how unfortunate is so many people, they get nothing from standing in taraweeh but sleeplessness. And tiredness. No, there is something more deeper than that. Patience, compassion, mutual feeling of pain for others, and discipline and the conscious, consciousness of God. So these are just some of the things, inshallah, that if we keep into if we keep in mind, and if we keep the objectives in, in mind, all of these things that we talked about right now you will see that fasting has an amazing character development. Character development. 